This report brought to you by the Richmond Club, where investors and high-growth companies meet. Pyrogenesis started out as a plasma-based environmental solutions company catering mainly to the U.S. military, but it has come a long way since. Here is the company's president and CEO, Peter Pascali, to tell us more. My name is uh, Peter Pascali. I'm the CEO of Pyrogenesis Canada. We are a high-tech company listed on the TSX Venture under the symbol PYR.V and on the OC, OTCQB and the Frankfurt, Frankfurt Exchange as well. My background's in finance. Uh, I used to um, do mergers and acquisitions for the Fortune 500 with, uh, on Wall Street in, in the 80s. Uh, and I uh, came upon this company called Pyrogenesis many years ago when it was four, four people. And uh, today, guided by an, uh, an experienced board, uh, you can see them here. I'm the only uh, employee director. All the other directors are outside directors. Of note, Bob Radden, he's a retired two-star general from the US military. Uh, he, uh, his expertise at the end of his career was not deploying troops, but actually negotiating multi-billion dollar contracts. So he helps us with our, our U.S. military business line, which you'll hear about more in a few moments. Uh, Dr. Ja uh, is a, uh, an engineer who uh, has had uh, over 40 years of experience with the Canadian Space Program. He's a member of the Order of Canada. And Andrew Abdella and Michael Blank uh, complete the board with uh, significant expertise in finance and accounting. Why would you be interested in plasma and pyrogenesis, sorry, at this particular juncture in this particular period in its history. Well, first and foremost, we've been around for over 25 years. We've, uh, we're a very well established company built on very conservative principles of growth. Of significance at the very bottom, actually, uh, we typically make between five and seven million dollars of revenues a year. We recently increased our backlog to 30 million dollars. at signed contracts, ladies and gentlemen not pipeline. At December 31st last year, it was $7 million. Uh, you'll see in a few moments how we are going to increase that over the next few months to $43 million. This backlog, we expect to run through our balance sheet over the next 12 to 18 months. Each one of our business lines, we've lined up with multi-billion dollar companies. Uh, we are teamed up with the U.S. military uh, with, uh, servicing their U.S. Uh, aircraft carrier. Uh, GE is using our core technology to make 3D, 3D printers, print powders for their printers. That's not licensed to us or from us, but that's our core technology. We actually have teamed up with a multi-billion dollar company in Europe. And um, so effectively, these multi-billion dollar companies have, uh, have vetted our technology for you, in a sense. Uh, but what, how do we do this? What do we, what do we actually, when I said we're a plasma-based company, what, is, what, 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 do, what do I mean by plasma? And, I, and again, I kept on saying I don't want to sound too Star Trek-ish, but it's the fourth state of matter. You might recall your science school teacher describing to you three states of matter, solid, liquid, and, and gas. When you heat one up, it becomes the other. Effectively, when you heat up a gas, it becomes plasma. The, um, the sun is a plasma ball, lightning is a plasma, 90%, over 90% of the universe is, a pl is plasma. So we did not invent plasma. But what we liked about it was its transformative, its transformative capabilities. So in the, four, in the picture on the, far, on the far right, you see a, a plasma. Those are our plasma torches. Um, we're experts in plasma. We have probably one of the largest concentrations in the world of plasma expertise. So we take these plasma torches and we put them into particular processes that are transformative. We convert waste to energy. And in some other, and in some other applications, we convert wire to powders for 3D printing. As I said, we've been around for over 25 years. In the early history, we're a pure R&D company. We effectively became known as an a plasma-based environmental solutions company to the U.S. military, which was extremely, gives a lot of credibility. But in 2015, what we did was we branched out into two other business lines. Our traditional environment military was one. Mining and metallurgy was another. And additive manufacturing was a third. In additive manufacturing, we make the small spherical powders for 3D printers. Within the... Um, the military environment business line, we have a long-standing relationship with the U.S. military we have, where we have provided them with a process 
to destroy waste on board their aircraft carrier. We're one of the few, if not the only, foreign technology on that aircraft carrier. We've already delivered two systems, and we're now in line to provide two more of our, of our, of our systems to the new aircraft carriers they're ordering. They're, Trump has already ordered two aircraft carriers. He's got the budget. The long lead items are, 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 were already ordered early last year. And we're in the process now of concluding a $13.5 million contract over the next few months for those two new aircraft carriers. And that's all publicly released. So that was our, our, core, our core business line. When we, when, we, when we evolved from an R&D company, we moved into this, into this new um, arena with the US military. We've become a poster child for the US military in the sense that when they have issues, they come to us and we try to solve them. We also provide a, a, a process to destroy chemical warfare weapons for them. But what we've done recently is we have, <coughs> excuse me, we've uh, di um, moved outside of that arena and applied our offering to non-military but environmental offerings. The one I'll just mention to you quickly here, which you may become, you, you're very familiar with, is iron ore pelletization which is essentially concentration, concentrating iron ore at the source to make it cheaper before you, um, you um, transport it. Well, that process uses diesel burners, which are not environmentally friendly and have been targeted by such nations as Sweden to find replacements. In fact, we won a bid to provide a one megawatt torch to Sweden for that process, and that's what's identified here. And you can look at our website or contact us later to find more details. The takeaway from this is essentially we have a long-standing relationship with a very credible client, the U.S. military. We are providing more systems for the U.S. aircraft carrier in the in ensuing months, around $13.5 million, and that we're getting to new non-military environmental um, uh, business lines. Mining and metallurgy is the second business line that I'll describe to you. Now, each one of our business lines are independent of each other. We don't do mining and metallurgy for the military. We don't do 3D printing for the military. They're very independent. And there, from an investor's perspective, is something very interesting. It really is, at Pyrogenesis, you're really investing, when you invest in Pyrogenesis, in a fund, a, a plasma fund. Uh, business lines that are extremely independent of each other. It's a multi-legged stool. So if something slows down, the other ones pick up for it. De-risks the, uh, de the offering. So in mining and metallurgy, we provide a system called dross right. The, tip, uh, the problem is within the aluminum industry is that as aluminum comes off hot and it comes in contact with oxygen, it forms something called dross. So dross acts like a sponge and it sucks up the aluminum. So you don't want that. So they scoop it off and put it to the side. But there's very valuable aluminum still in that waste stream. And it typically goes off-site to recuperate that valuable aluminum. Why off-site? Usually you use a salt rotary furnace to recu recover the aluminum. And because it's using salt, and salt cannot come in contact with aluminum, and, and, or else it will contaminate the whole plant, it's banned from aluminum smelters. So it has to be done off-site. What we have is a system called Dross Right. It uh, doesn't use salt. It's salt-free. <coughs> And it, it has a higher recovery of metal. There's about 3 million tons of dross produced a year, which means there's a maximum number of systems we can sell for about 600 systems. But this is where it gets interesting. We sold our first system for about $600,000, between six hundred and $800,000. We sold the second, third, and fourth for 1.2 million. And we just entered into a contract, our, our technology just won a contract, a $20 million contract for seven systems. The, um, here's, a, here's a video of the Dross Right system. Pyrogenesis Dross Right System maximizes aluminum recovery, salt free. Hot or cold dross is introduced into an argon filled tilting rotary furnace. 
preventing undesired oxidation or thermiting reactions. The furnace is rotated in order to separate the metal phase from the oxide and or non-metallic phase. Drossrite recovers 20% more aluminum than leading competing dross separating technologies. The recovered metal is removed and returned directly back into the holding furnace, while a controlled amount of oxygen is introduced into the Drossrite furnace. The exothermic reaction between the oxygen and the non-recoverable metal heats up the remaining residue, allowing the furnace to be used without an external burner, eliminating the production of greenhouse gases while simultaneously reducing the overall waste residue production. Drossrite has more than 20% decrease in residue generation. The exothermic reaction increases the furnace temperature to the operating temperature, thus preparing the furnace for the next charge. The entire dross right process is highly automated and controlled and monitored from the highly intuitive HMI. The dross right advantages include salt-free, non-hazardous waste residues, substantially increased aluminum recovery, on-site operation, no degradation of recovered metal, minimal residue, cost-effective, highly automated, minimal footprint and storage space, minimal manpower, treats black and white dross and hot and cold dross, mainly used by aluminum smelters, parts manufacturers and recyclers, Pyrogenesis revolutionary new technology dross right is the world's first highly efficient salt-free dross solution, allowing smelters to treat dross on site, saving our environment while saving your bottom line. So just some footnotes with respect to Drossrite. As I mentioned to you before, it was the, um, the uh, first, uh, sorry, what I, what I mentioned to you before, it was um, our first system was sold for about 600K, the second, third, and fourth for 1.2, and then seven subsequent systems were sold for $20 million. That $20 million contract was chosen by, it was, one of, it was the largest, as far as we know, the largest contract ever put out to bid for Drossrite uh, processing. Anybody and everybody who could process dross was there and competing against us, and we won it based on the technology. And it was by a very discerning end user, one of the largest smelters in the world. L last but not least, I'd like to touch upon our third business line, added manufacturing. Uh, many years ago, we invented a process called plasma atomization. It's now a household name within the industry. It's the way we made small spherical powders, metal powders, uh, that are currently used in metal printers to, pro to, uh, uh, to uh, pro pro produce 3D printed metal parts. Effectively, these are three pictures and they reflect what's actually happening. On the very far left side is a production uh, system to produce these powders. In the middle, you see three plasma torches. And the, on the right side, you see small spherical powders. So what we've done is we've tilted the, um, the, uh, the, um, the, pr the, the machine on the left a bit so you don't see what's happening at the top. But effectively what you do, what's happening at the top is the middle picture. We have three plasma torches. You can imagine impinging, impinging on a titanium wire and, collect, and we collect these small spherical powders um, at, at, at the bottom of the system. This is a very complicated slide, but it talks about a bit of the history and a, and a bit of the opportunity. Um, a company by, by the name of APNC uh, licensed our technology many years ago. We had actually, the, the, way we, the reason why we, we, we came upon this technology was not for 3D printing. We were involved in, uh, with NATO to make lightweight armor, and we needed small spherical titanium powders, so we made it ourselves. <laughs> and, and eventually, uh, uh, 3D printing uh, started, went from plastics to titanium powders, exactly the powders which we used to make. At the time, APNC had our technology, and uh, we're trying to make a go of it when Arcam, a printer company, uh, sorry, a company that manufactures 3D printers, bought them for 30, $35 million. It was under Arcam where APNC became the, uh, the, uh, the dominant supplier of titanium uh, powder in the marketplace. And so what we decided to do is get back in the market 
not to take them over or take them, take them on, but just to be a, a credible second supplier to, to companies that, that were buying powders from uh, APNC. And as we're getting our, our kit together and getting our system in place, along comes GE and buys RCAM and Concept Laser for over a billion dollars and effectively disrupts the supply chain. And many of the discussions then went from being a second supplier to being a primary supplier. And that culminated last year on January 8th with us signing with a multi-billion dollar company, Aubert and Duval, out of France. And, and to, what we have with them is a, uh, an exclusive relationship to provide them with titanium powder and they will exclusively buy from us for the European market, the European atom manufacturing market. Over the, past, uh, uh, over the past year, what we've been doing is qualifying our powder and our facilities with the um, end users. It's been delayed a bit because during that period of time, we, uh, we did two things. We increased our production rate significantly to over 25 kilograms an hour. Just to give you an idea, APNC has publicized that they do between 11 and 12 on a good day. And we also decreased our, our capital costs. So we made significant inroads uh, with, it, with respect to added manufacturing. We teamed up with a multi-billion dollar player. And, um, and I can't talk too much more about that. Our partner likes to keep the, his, his, his cards close to the chest. But, uh, you, 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 but believe me, it's a very exciting place to be a part of Genesis right now, even with respect to added manufacturing. So in summary, what I've gone over with you is a plasma-based company. Uh, we've, not a new one. We were established. Um, we have over a 25-year history. We have three very independent business lines, which reduce risk uh, to an investor. However, it makes it a little bit more complicated uh, to review. Yeah, it's basically three businesses in one. Uh, but having said that, we have established ourselves with the US Navy in one. Uh, with uh, uh, one of the largest uh, uh, aluminum smelters in the world in the second, and with Obert and Duval, another multi-billion dollar company in the third. So they have, in effect, done some vetting for you with respect to our technology and potential. Um, over the recent months, our, 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 uh, our uh, backlog has increased to 29.5 million from 7 million this time last year. We're going to add on another 13 million with respect to the contracts I mentioned to you with, with the, the aircraft carrier to bring us somewhere around $43 million. Take that in view of what we've been doing over the past several years at five to $7 million, it's very significant. Every one of our business lines are at an inflection point. The opportunity here is that the market hasn't yet gotten wind of it. They don't understand 100% what the impact this will be on the company. And therein lies the opportunity. Our stock, surprisingly enough, has dropped since the announcements uh, of this $20 million contract from somewhere around 55 cents to about 40 cents, 35 cents, uh, 37 cents the past few days. Our market cap is somewhere around $50 million. And I invite you to visit our website or to call us up for more investor relations material or answers to your questions. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know. You've been watching the Richmond Club Report. If you've just come across this channel, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find a lot of interesting and lucrative investment and trading ideas around here. We'll see you again soon on the next video. Cheers, guys. Have an amazing and profitable day.